Hello, everyone. My name is Deepa Majumdar, and I'm a professor of philosophy at Purdue University Northwest. This is my presentation, the first presentation of what we call Philosophy Fridays at, at Purdue Northwest. And, and our theme for fall 2021 is philosophers on exile and philosophers in exile focusing on the refugee problem. So today I'll be speaking to you about the, the refugee who is a special 21st century phenomenon. Um, so here are some statistics or some facts first. UNHCR defines the refugee as someone who has been forced to flee his or her country because of persecution, war, or violence. Leading causes of people fleeing their countries are ethnic, tribal, and religious violence, plus war and famine. More than half of those displaced across borders come from five countries, Syria, Venezuela, Afghanistan, South Sudan, and Myanmar. An internally displaced person or IDP is someone slightly different. This is someone who's been forced to flee home, but has never crossed an international border. Countries with some of the largest IDPs are Colombia, Syria, DRC, and Yemen. In 2020, there were 26.4 million refugees in the world, the highest ever seen. According to Amnesty International, there are currently an estimated 25.9 million refugees worldwide, half of whom are children. Countries that have hosted the largest number of refugees include Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, Pakistan, Uganda, Germany, Iran, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Bangladesh. Countries that have produced the largest number of refugees, produced the largest number of refugees include Syria, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Myanmar, Somalia, Sudan, and Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. Countries most sought by refugees as destinations are USA, Germany, Canada, UK, France, Australia, and Saudi Arabia. But advanced Western countries are reluctant to take refugees. Using this brief background, we may want to reflect again on the definition of the refugee. Who is the refugee? Not only a person fleeing his or her home country for a foreign land, a refugee is also an agent of history who, without meaning to, builds a bridge between two or more streams of history. A refugee who is literally a person seeking refuge is thereby a bridge that connects parallel histories. A refugee is also a person in a state of exile. No foreign country, no matter how wonderful, can compare to one's homeland. The state of exile that the refugee faces is so excruciating that the Stoic philosopher Epictetus speaks of exile and death in the same breath. Thus, in passage 21, he says, this is passage 21 from his handout, let death and exile and all things which appear terrible be daily before your eyes, but death chiefly, and you will never entertain any abject thought nor to eagerly covet anything. Applied to the modern refugee, this means exile like death is not only terrible, but also a source of strength. Meditating on exile cleanses us of abject thoughts or what we would call depression today. It also cleanses us of undue attachment. Imagine the refugee who has to leave his homeland, family, belongings, and all former associations, sometimes suddenly, like the recent Afghan refugees with little to no possessions, not knowing where he is headed. Imagine exile of this type unplanned, sudden, traumatic, with no hope of ever returning home or seeing one's loved ones. That many refugees prefer destination countries in the Western world demonstrates the paradox of neocolonialism, that the 21st century refugees fleeing a former colony and yearning for Western nations that have engaged in colonialism and neocolonialism reveals not only the pendulum of history which swings from extreme to extreme, but also the, also the nuanced character of neocolonialism. I would like to end with this quotation from Virginia Woolf, and I quote, they say the sky is the same everywhere. Travelers, the shipwrecked, exiles, and the dying draw comfort from the thought. And with this, I'd like to close today's presentation, and I hope we'll all keep the refugee in mind. Um, the fears of demographic extinction, which is tied to identity politics, I think should never ever get in the way of showing our basic humanity and kindness to those who are homeless in the special sense of the refugee. Thank you for listening.